Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Full Gym Law Firm. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I wanna to talk to you about juvenile criminal cases. Is it possible to beat a juvenile case? And does it have to remain on your child's permanent criminal record? By the way, if you wait around to the end of this video, I'll also give you a free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged With a Crime in Texas. Okay, let's talk a little bit. Now listen, when you talk about juvenile, the juvenile system in Texas, it's very different, okay? You, when you break down whether or not you have a charge that is an adult charge or a juvenile charge, there's two very different standards. The juvenile criminal cases are unique because the standard is different than the adult criminal system. And it is critical that you know your legal rights and what your options are for your child if you are facing a juvenile charge here in Texas. So what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about how does the system vary in juvenile compared to the adult, char to the adult system and what can be done about it. Now, who, first, the, the real question is, who is a juvenile under Texas law? Under Texas law, children younger than 17 years of age, but older than 10 years of age have, that have allegedly committed a crime must be tried in juvenile court. This holds true for the lowest of criminal charges, like Class C misdemeanors, up to capital murder. Texas law states that once a child reaches the age of 17, he or she can be tried as an adult. Now, how does the Texas juvenile court system work? Let's identify that. Now, although a child may be arrested or detained for allegedly committing a crime, there are some specific requirements under the Texas law that work very different under the juvenile system than what you find under the adult system. Now, under Texas law, the juvenile justice code is going to be found in the Texas family code. So if you're out there and your, your child is facing a, um, a criminal case in juvenile court, don't go looking in the Texas penal code. You won't find anything in there. You'll have to actually go to the Texas family code, okay? So the general standard in juvenile court is that there is a presumption of rehabilitation for juvenile, okay? That is important for you to understand. In adult court, there are other standards involved. Deterrence, rehabilitation, punishment. Those are standards that are much more open to interpretation and it's gonna be much more punitive in adult court. But you get in juvenile court, there is a presumption that this child needs to be rehabilitated. Why? Because they're a child, right? A child deserves that opportunity to be rehabilitated. The primary question though in juvenile court what is the best interest of the child? What is in the best interest of the child? So if the police believe they have probable cause to arrest a juvenile, they are permitted to take the juvenile into custody. But unlike the adult system, the law does not require the police officer to have an arrest warrant before detaining or arresting a juvenile. Now, let's say your juvenile has been arrested. Let's say your child's been arrested. What is a detention hearing in juvenile court? What happens next? Well, under Texas law, every juvenile that has been arrested or detained has a right to a detention hearing. This is the first step in the juvenile justice system. Texas law requires that the detention must be held within 48 hours. Upon arrest, you'll find that the juvenile law requires that that juvenile be delivered to the detention center and that parents or guardians or the legal guardians of that child must be contacted, quote, without unnecessary delay is what the code says, all right? Now, the purpose of this detention hearing, why have the detention hearing? Well, the whole purpose of it is for the juvenile court to determine the nature of the charge and then are there home arrangements? Is there someone to release the juvenile to that can take care of the child? And can they supervise them? And to, at that point, those decisions have to be weighed to determine whether or not that child can be released from the detention of the juvenile facility, okay? Now, unlike the adult just, uh, justice system, the juvenile justice provisions under the family code do not have a bail process. So there is no bail, per se, under the juvenile code, okay? As a result, there is a strict requirement. It must, this hearing must be held no later than 48 hours after being detained. 
The court must take all due diligence to locate the parents of the guard or the guardians of the juvenile. And the court is, if they're not able to contact someone, what if they can't find the parents or a legal guardian? Then that child must be given a guardian ad litem to act on their behalf at the detention hearing. Okay. Now here's the question I get all the time. How long can a juvenile be detained in Texas? Under Texas juvenile law, a juvenile being detained must be released from detention and notice the must, must be released unless the court determines, number one, the juvenile is, juvenile is high risk to abscond. Abscond means to run away. Number two, the juvenile is not receiving suitable supervision, care, or protection from a parent, guardian, or other person. Number three, the juvenile la lacks a parent, guardian, custodian, or other person able to return him for court appearances. Number four, the juvenile may be dangerous to himself or a threat to the safety of the public if they're released. Or number five, the juvenile has previously been found to be, quote, delinquent or received a previous conviction for a crime punishable by a term in jail or prison and is likely to commit an offense if released. So what happens if a juvenile is denied release? at a detention hearing. What if you go to this detention hearing and you find out they're not gonna allow your child to be released? Well, if you and your juvenile attorney attended the detention hearing and the judge denied that request for your release, your juvenile lawyer can request a detention hearing to be held every 10 days, literally. Every 10 days you have a right to repetition the court and make sure that that ruling of being detained is necessary according to the law. Now, please understand these detention hearings are somewhat discretionary of the judge, so your juvenile attorney needs to do all that they can to be diligent in making those requests. Otherwise, you don't want your child to be sitting in there uh, unnecessarily for an extended period of time. Now, what happens after a juvenile is released from detention? What happens next? Well, once they've been released, there are certainly going to be bond conditions, most likely. Those bond conditions are different than what you'll find in the adult criminal justice system. Many of these conditions, I hate to say it, parents, but many of these conditions are going to fall back on the parents of the guardian. Why? Because you as a parent have a duty to supervise and bring that juvenile to court. In fact, it's not uncommon for the judge to place specific requirements of on, uh, on the actual legal, legal guardian present as a condition of their child's release. And it may not seem fair, and many times it doesn't, but the parents may be held to the same requirements as the juvenile, even though the parents didn't do anything wrong. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about how do actual juvenile criminal charges work. To initiate the prosecution, the prosecutor must file, this is different than the adult court. The adult court, either a criminal complaint or an indictment can be filed and proceeded forward to a grand jury. In the juvenile justice system, the prosecutor must file a petition to initiate the case. The Texas Family Load re uh, Code requires that the juvenile prosecutor must file a petition within 30 days for more, uh, from uh, the release for more serious criminal charges. If the petition is not timely filed, the juvenile court must release that juvenile from custody. So how does that matter? Let's say your child loses the detention hearing, is sitting in court, and the prosecutor doesn't file their petition within 30 days, the code says that your child must be released. Must be released because the, the prosecutor didn't initiate the case, okay? So if the charge was not a serious felony, the felony or the juvenile prosecutor is required to then file a petition 15 days after the detention hearing date. So if it's a serious charge, like a felony, 30 days. If it's a lesser charge, 15 days, okay? Now, here's the question we get all the time. Can a juvenile case be dismissed? It's possible, okay? If you hire an experienced and aggressive juvenile attorney, then what they need to do is first access the evidence, sit down with you, explain the process and what is coming up for each and every court setting. It can vary depending on what county you're in, what type of prosecutor you're dealing with, and the type of judge that you have in your juvenile court. The best juvenile lawyers will get access to the evidence, provide that information so that the family has an opportunity to understand the nature of the charges, take the time to answer all the questions for the family, and generate a customized defense strategy for how to attack the case. So then what happens? The question becomes, okay, I go over everything. What happens when I get to court with my child? 
When you appear at juvenile court, it is important to remember that every time your child appears, you must accompany your child. There must be a parent or legal guardian present. If your juvenile lawyer reviews the evidence and helps determine that you should proceed forward to contest those allegations, you can set your case for a jury trial. Now, it's important, though, that, all the juvenile ha- that although the juvenile has a right to a jury trial, the prosecutor, here's the difference, under the adult system, both the state and the defendant have a right to a jury trial, okay? So in order to get out of a jury trial, the state has to waive their right to a jury trial if you're charged as an adult. Under the juvenile justice system, that's not the case. The state does not have the same right under the law to a jury trial as you do. If the judge or jury believes that the case was proven by the state of Texas, they will find or enter that the juvenile, here's what it would be, engaged in delinquent conduct. That's the actual language. This ruling creates a presumption. Here's all that happens. If you lose at a trial, there's a presumption now that the child needs rehabilitation. So the next step after that jury trial would be the sentencing, which is required under the juvenile code to be done by the judge. Okay. So the judge must remember that the primary purpose of the juvenile system, and your lawyers should always remind the judge of this, is to protect the public, yes, but also to rehabilitate the juvenile. So we've talked about a trial. What happens if there's a plea bargain? Now, if you're, let's say your juvenile attorney and the prosecutor come to an agreement that you are pleased with to resolve your case, this will result in paperwork to be drawn up where there is a stipulation to the evidence and it will require the juvenile to enter a plea of true to the criminal allegations. Now, sentencing juveniles as adults may not be in the interest of justice in every case. Many factors, including what goes into this, the crime itself, Literally, that needs to be considered. What type of crime are we talking about? Here's the thing. Your lawyer needs to go in and remind that judge, if you get to this place where there is sentencing, that, to it, that the purpose of the juvenile system is to, and I want to quote this from the Texas Family Code, section 58.003. The purpose of the juvenile system is, quote, to remove when appropriate the taint of criminality from children committing certain unlawful acts. This creates a strong argument for your juvenile attorney to persuade the judge to a sentence that allows to ju- the juvenile to have the record sealed, um, have that record sealed from their future criminal record, okay? And that's so what's important here. The most important thing is you don't want your child to be shouldered with the burden of having a permanent criminal record for the rest of their life. So that, that's one of the biggest things here. So at the end of the day, it always reminds me, this is the type of you know, sentence that Tarrant County prosecutors were looking to give what's called a determinate sentence. If you remember the case of Ethan Couch, um, the judges faced a difficult decision in trying to appropriately sentence a juvenile. Now listen, I'm not here to judge whether or not the sentence for Ethan Couch was appropriate or not, but I want to remind you that the attorneys in that situation, they focused back on the purpose of the juvenile system. The purpose is, and there's a presumption for rehabilitation for a child regardless of what's going on, all right? So what we do, just as a reminder, listen, we at the Fulgham Law Firm, um, we provide defense for many juveniles here, particularly in the North Texas area. And so it's it's important that if your son or your daughter, if you have a juvenile that is facing a pending criminal charge, you need to get with an attorney that can help Make sure you're aware of what your rights are and provide you a line of defense of knowing what to do to help prevent your child from receiving a determinate sentencing or from having this on their permanent criminal record. Now, I just want to remind you, listen, your child still has a future. One of the things I'm very passionate about on this, no child should ever be given up on. So no matter whether or not it's your first, your child's first criminal offense in the juvenile system, or it's their third or fourth, no matter what it is that they're facing, don't give up on your child. Give them an opportunity to get their life straight and put them on a path for success for their future. If you would like a free case analysis, a free consultation with the Fulgham Law Firm, don't hesitate to contact our office at 817-877-3000. 
If you liked what you heard here today, and if you found this helpful, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our video. And oh, by the way, I promised you, if you waited around to the end of this video, I would give you a free ebook. All you have to do is click the link down below in the YouTube description. I'll be happy if you input your email address, I'll be happy to send you over the free ebook, What to Do If You Have Been Charged with a Crime in Texas. Thanks again for joining us here today. Look forward to seeing you on our next video series. Take care.